a highly critical leader in the Times yesterday, pointed out that Baroness Boothroyd, holder of the Order of Merit, one of our most distinguished members, is being investigated, along with some 60 other peers, for not complying and taking the online bullying, discrimination and sexual harassment workshop. She missed the deadline, my lords, not because she'd refused, but in common with several others, because she had medical health problems. And I've heard even this morning, my lords, of another very disturbing example of a noble lord who, for similar and other reasons, was not able to take the course before, I think it was the 4th or the 8th of April. He took it, but he is still being censured because he didn't meet the April the 1st deadline. And to add insult to injury, my lords, we are told that the Commissioner for Standards had forbidden those to whom she has written to comment. If they do, she alleges that they will be in contempt of Parliament. I am astounded that she should make such bullying comments. My lords, my lords, I would ask Lord Mance, in his capacity as chairman of the Conduct Committee, to summon an early meeting with his colleagues to reconsider their approach. As the Times said yesterday, elderly and respected parliamentarians, of whom Baroness Boothroyd is a most notable example, should not be made to suffer because certain other peers have behaved badly. I made it plain when I opposed the introduction of the compulsory element that I had no sympathy for such peers. They should be treated severely and meet their just deserts. But if, unlike the appropriate equivalent committee in another place, the Lordship, your Lordship's Conduct Committee decides to continue recommending compulsory training, I'm sure they would find much better value by arranging for it to be done in-house rather than by spending £750,000 on a consultancy which clearly has little knowledge of Parliament. My Lords, I would appeal to Lord Mounts to act expeditiously on this matter in the way that he and his committee have rightly acted expeditiously on the matter of Lord Gardner of Kimball. My Lords, I think that this is a sad subject to have to raise on the last day of this session, but to have the reputations of some of our most notable and honoured members traduced in this way is completely unacceptable.